Hey. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we are going to be So, why don't we try and predict who is going to be your club's next manager? Whether that be your manager is, I think, going to leave soon, or maybe in certain cases, I think your manager is going to be here for a while, so if it's kind of your long term guy, it'll be interesting to see how many of these I actually end up getting right. Um, but as always, this is just a bit of fun, um, and this was also really, really hard to predict, because as I mentioned, some of them are like, I don't see your manager leaving very soon, so I have to predict very, very far in the future, but it was a fun experiment, um, and hopefully you guys do enjoy, let me know which ones you agree with or disagree with in the comments. And uh, yeah, let's let's begin. We're obviously doing soft spoken as well. We haven't done that in a little while, so let's begin. And usually we go in alphabetical order, but I put on you know switch up. Wolves fans are sick of being last and wait until the end. So we're gonna go in a completely random order this time. So starting off with Brentford. Rob Edwards So long ago did Thomas Frank take the Brentford reins that he was handed them by Dean Smith and his squad contained as many players currently at other Premier League clubs as it did those who remain on the Brentford books. It therefore becomes almost impossible to predict what the bees look like as a post Frank's Premier League club considering such a thing has technically never even existed. It seems unlikely they would pluck someone out of unemployment to be assistant head coach for a couple of years before stepping up again, but you never know. Perhaps a better bet would be to prioritise consistency, dependability and reliability. Such can be the perils of transitioning from a long-term manager into a new era. Edwards carries that same air of authority, which married with a quietly strategic mind, seems suited to making sense of a brimly chaos, particularly as the underdog. So, I think the looting man, Rob Edwards, would be a pretty good fit. Brentford. Nottingham Forest, David Moyes. There's no point pretending Moyes' fourth Premier League club will probably be his last. As south as things have gone at West Ham, he remains a very effective coach in the right circumstances, and many clubs will favour that over progressive football. If Nottingham Forest are willing to bring Nuno back after his consistent occupation of the upper mid-table and failure in the biggest job of his coaching career, then Moyes need not fear for his future employment when the West Ham dream is over. Forest and Maranakis, their owner, love sacking managers, so I could see Moyes leaving West Ham at the end of this season Maybe Nuno leaves Forrest at the end of the season if he just narrowly keeps them up. And then they bring in Moyes who will steady the ship. And it could actually end up being a pretty good appointment. So I don't think this is too bad of a shout. Luton, John Massino. <coughs> Top of League One. 
clear of Derby and Bolton. The 37-year-old's first managerial role has gone rather well, and the question is quickly becoming whether Pompey can join him on this incredible rise. They were on one of the largest unbeaten runs in England this season, and Massino is looking like a very promising manager. It's a bit reductive, but Luton's current success under a football league journeyman, who was a dependable player and is a young, promising coach, is a path worth revisiting if they come as highly rated as Messino. I could see Luton maybe dropping down into the championship, or Edwards, as I said earlier, leaving for Brentford, and then Messino, who will be banging in the championship with Portsmouth by then, getting the call and making that step up, almost Nathan Jones style. Fulham, Steve Cooper. A weird situation appears to have at least temporarily engulfed the coaching career of Cooper, who did excellently in difficult circumstances at Nottingham Forest but whose best prospects of continuing in the Premier League seem to be through another promotion from the Championship. Crystal Palace considered his case closely, by all accounts, but Cooper has otherwise only been linked with Championship vacancies. But he could, and indeed should, be aiming higher. Fulham are one of those clubs for whom it is tough to even know where to start guessing their succession plan. So embedded in their fabric is Marco Silva. But this is already the longest managerial spell of his career, and he will have to part eventually. There were heavy rumours he was going to leave at the start of this season, and maybe if Palina leaves this summer, there's no investment he resigns or maybe gets a better job. I mean, if that happens, I could see them turning to a pretty safe set of hands to steady the ship in Steve Cooper. Brighton, Kieran McKenna. This is very hard, as Brighton already have a name in mind, saved on a laptop. Chelsea will probably happily spend a nine-figure sum to acquire no club will have a clearer contingency plan in mind, yet equally no club's plan is more difficult to figure out. Brighton give nothing away, and when it last came to replacing a manager, Deserfi only really emerged as a primary candidate when the deal was close to completion. Ange Postacoglu and Kieto Knudsen were on the last shortlist, but the former is likely out of reach now, while the latter still impresses for Bodo Glimt in Norway. He would remain an option, as would Arnie Slot from Feyenoord, but the fine work of McKenna at Ipswich must have him in contention, and if he can get Ipswich to the Prem, that would definitely attract Brighton to be sniffing around should Deserby be poached this summer. Liverpool Javi Alonso. Well, this is one where I can actually see at the end of the season, if I'm right, with Klopp leaving. Now more than ever feels the right time to get Alonso. Real Madrid won't be stepping in with Angelotti's contract running out next year. Bayern Munich will inevitably try, but that move might not happen given how much he loves Leverkusen right now. And as long as Pep Guardiola doesn't suffer a case of the Jurgens, there will be no positions to fill at Man City. Liverpool cannot guarantee a smooth and successful transition from their greatest period in the modern era, but Alonso is unique in that he will garner an immediate level of buy-in from fans who want to see something fresh and ambitious yet familiar, packed up with a tangible, brilliant body of work, and players at the boardroom. It's the perfect fit, but this really all depends on Javi Alonso, and if he wants to join them, 
or who go to Bayern Munich or Wei Towns for the Real Madrid job. But I think Xavi Alonso is definitely first choice for Liverpool. <clears throat> West Ham, Graham Potter. Inevitable though his Premier League return seems, it is difficult to get a proper handle on Potter. A positive outlook would reflect upon some sensational work with Ostersons, a fine season with Swansea, and a transformative spell at Brighton. With obvious mitigating circumstances, during his seven months at Chelsea, viewed through a more negative, negative or sceptical prism, Brighton's structure showcased his strengths, and Chelsea's lack thereof highlighted his weaknesses. It could easily be argued that both have improved since he left. Potter remains an obviously talented coach, but a Chelsea debacle undoubtedly tainted him as a commodity among that calibre of club, and he would have to accept that he must take a perceived step down for the good of his career. West Ham would be just the right drop down, not too big, but not too small. And if Moyes goes this summer with his contract up, I'm sure Potter will be high on that West Ham wish list, and if offered that job, he would be silly not to take it. Chelsea, Ruben Amarim. Amarim has been mentioned in certain Chelsea circles, and beyond the lack of Premier League experience, there are a little obvious drawbacks to his candidacy. Trophies, European pedigree, strong character, and Amarim would come with the added bonus of a full game on beaten streak against Spurs and Arsenal. He seems a good fit for the job, which may come about soon if Potch doesn't get his act together, and he was actually heavily linked to the job before Potch took charge. The Chelsea board have an obsession with youngsters, and Amarim is quite young when it comes to the manager space, only age 39, so I mean that's another bonus, and why he would be a great fit. I'm sure the Chelsea board are very very big admirers of him. He is already loosely linked to the job, and is ready for the step up. Now as a Chelsea fan, how do I feel if this were to happen? Mm, mixed feelings, but... I really think that the Chelsea board are going to go for Amarin, and if not, they'll just re <laughs> resort to the norm and go and get the Zerbi, as it, you know, they love Brighton. Manchester City, Michel Sanchez. Picking a successor to Pep at Man City might be one of the hardest on this list, but there is a rather boring and obvious candidate. They will have their pick of managers, but the next manager is already technically theirs. Mikel is working wonders with Shalona, and they are ultimately an understandably doomed title challenge has already placed 48-year-old Mikel on many esteemed radars. Of course, Man City own Shalona with Mikel one of the jewels of their multi club model. It seems like an obvious choice just to promote Mikel, who is used to working with this board and model, plays a very similar way into the hot seat. But this depends on where Mikel will be by then, as it wouldn't surprise me if he left this summer for a big job like Barcelona, or left in a couple years time and out of the multi-club model, and Pep is still at Man City, which would change this prediction very much. But if I was going off right now, my gut instinct is Mikel will be promoted to a Man City job. Bournemouth, Carlos Corbelan. 
In explaining upon the switch in philosophy from survival and counter-attacking to the aggressive front-foot stylings of Andoni Iriola, Cherry's owner Bill Foley described the new manager as a Bielsa student and fast-paced. There is really only one way to go from there, and a quick scan of Bielsa disciples chose Corbran in a favourable light for his work in the championship with Huddlesfield and West Brom. It feels like a while since a proper managerial promotion from a football league to the top table, and an ambitious but developing bomb of team would be a good fit. I could see this happening potentially, let's say Iriola next season gets poached by a bigger club. Bournemouth turned to Corbran, who may even be in the Prem by then with West Brom. Sheffield United, Scott Parker. Sheffield look pretty doomed, <coughs> and unless they have a Leicester miracle, they are heading to the championship next season. Chris Wilder will probably start the season with them there, but I don't see him lasting very long. Probably won't last the season. So they will turn to an experienced championship manager to help them get out of trouble in Scott Parker, who is without a job right now. He might do alright, but considering the way he exploded with the Bournemouth board due to a lack of investment, I don't think he would click very well with the Sheffield board. So yeah, Scott Parker will be the next Sheffield manager, probably lasting about three months before resigning. Tottenham, Thomas Frank. The only Premier League manager on a longer term contract than Boston Coglu is Company, which will not offer the comfort and security it should, but nevertheless underlines how committed Spurs are to this relationship and how hard this one might be. Frank's Brentford contract actually runs to the same point of summer 2027, but if he is allowed to come more than half a decade of perennial excellent Premier League management without being plucked by a club higher up the food chain, then everyone has failed in their duty. The Dane's name is apparently on the Liverpool Shore list and is always loosely connected with other such posts. There is a little bit of Mauricio Pochettino about him as a coach whose defined style and strong leadership could easily be transposed onto a team higher up the table. I reckon by the time Ange leaves, which may be due to going to a bigger club, Frank will be ready to depart Brentford and Spurs will be chomping at the bit to get him. Everton, Julian Lopetegui. <laughs> this one seems all too easy. Sean Dyche will get hit by the same Everton curse that every manager since David Moyes has been struck with. In either their second or third full season in charge, things absolutely collapse due to poor investment, and then Everton find themselves in a relegation battle. The board panic, sack the manager, hire some experienced guy to come in who saves them, every thinks they are back and then they enter the same cycle once again. Lopetegui, considering he's jumped from club to club in the last four years, fits the perfect bill and has experience saving clubs in the Premier League from relegation. Not to mention the new owners, or prospective new owners, also part own Sevilla, which is where he used to manage. So I guess they kind of already know it. So I'll be shocked if this didn't happen. Manchester United, Roberto De Zerbi. The accepted wisdom is that any new owner would want to stamp their authority on the club by bringing in their own man, thus outlining it as a fresh era. It remains to be seen whether Sir Jim Ratcliffe, Omar Barati and Dan Ashworth identify a candidate or if they just continue with Eric Tett and Hogg, but I reckon they will actually stick with him, for now, 
and then just sort of Tuchel Chelsea style. When a bad set of results occur next season, they will use it as an excuse to get rid of him and get their own man. And given that they have appointed the Man City CEO and Newcastle Sporting Director, I think they will appoint a manager who plays attacking good football and is a bit of a project manager. Enter Roberto De Zerbi, one of the most talked up managers out there. If he's not snapped up by a club by then, then I think he will be high on their list, considering they were linked with Graham Potter. And, I mean, the Zerbius is a replacement who's done arguably a better job than Potter. So why don't just go for the better version of Potter? Crystal Palace. Sean Dyche. Fingers crossed for Oliver Glasner, but the last and only other time Crystal Palace went proper foreign with their manager, the experiment lasted four games before a monumental panic. The new Palace manager has a Europe League winner's medal and some Bundesliga pedigree, but the reason he left Frankfurt was mainly due to clashes with the board, and considering Palace fans have been protesting this season about their board, I don't think this is a match made in heaven. I can see Glasner doing well for a while before maybe falling out with the board and it all falls apart, and then, in typical Palace fashion, they turn to an older English manager to get them out of trouble and keep them up in Sean Dyche, who by then, as I mentioned earlier, would probably be sacked by Everton for Julian Lopetegui. I mean, Palace have gone for the likes of Tony Pulis, Neil Warnock, Roy Hodgson, Sam Allardyce. Why not complete the set and get Sean Dyche? Wolves, Sergio Concechal. This might seem a bit punchy right now to suggest the current Porto manager, who's guided them to multiple league titles, a consistent Champions League knockout finishes, will be rocking up at mid-table Wolves, but it makes perfect sense. As we all know, the Wolves owners are very close to Jorge Mendes, with pretty much every player they own being managed by Mendes. Now, to be fair, this relationship has slowly decreased, and this summer they flip the script, hiring Gary O'Neill, who Mendes probably has never heard of in his life. But previously, they hired two managers who were Mendes clients, and also have some very talented managers such as Julian Lopetegui, who at the time was a bit of a coup. I could see when Wolves move on from O'Neill, they give Mendes a call, ask him if he knows any good managers. He goes to his client list, sees Sergio Concechal, who's been at Porto for over a decade at this point, wants a bit of a change, wants a challenge. He tells him they can offer you a fat wage, Premier League football, and then boom, he's the next Wolves manager. Arsenal. Arnie Slot, the last man standing after the trend of former player managerial gambles, Mikel Arteta has proven that a knows the club appointment absolutely can work. It just requires tactical acumen, strong clear leadership and a good clear structure. There is no clear end in sight to the Arteta process even if the sort of reports that emerged claiming that he would jump ship to Barcelona can be expected to crop up. But it must come to an end at some point. Arteta's reign is the seventh longest in the entire football league, and one of those above him on that list is leaving at the end of the season due to burnout. So, I'll go for a bit of a rogue shout in Arnie's slot. The Dutchman has so far only managed in his native country, impressing initially at AZ Alkmaar before being appointed Feyenoord manager. Slot guided Feyenoord to their first league title in seven years last season, bringing a free-flowing style of football to Feyenoord, a style that has seen the likes of Spurs show interest in the Dutchman. I can see by the time Arteta is ready to leave, Slot would have gone 
do a bit of a stepping stone club um, such as a Leipzig or a Leverkusen would start to impress there and then Arsenal would go for him and sign him from there Aston Villa Thomas Tuchel picking a theme or clues as to future direction out of managerial succession line that reads Sherwood, God, Di Matteo, Steve Bruce, Dean Smith, Gerard, and Emery is not particularly straightforward. Villa were undeniably the punchers when their current relationship started, but if and when Emery does leave, and the hope is that it won't be for some time, the club will be a more attractive proposition than perhaps ever before. They will have not quite their pick of managers, but certainly some heft with which to approach the field. That brings big names into their orbit, and considering they went for Emery and also Gerard, they do love a big name manager. So I'll go for a bit of a crazy one in Thomas Tuchel. Tuchel's stock is slowly falling, with his time at Bayern Munich not going well, to say the least. And if he goes to another big club and fails, by then the village job will probably be available. They may be an established top six side by then, and Tuchel may be looking for a club to rebuild himself. And Villa love a big name, so he may opt for him. It's a punchy suggestion, but I wouldn't be shocked to see it. Newcastle, Stefano Pioli. For all the phenomenal work Eddie Howe has done, at some point there will have to be a change in the Newcastle dugout. Their ownership situation and the ruthlessness inherent with that practically demands it. His Excellency is famously patient, but will only accept the concept of that burn at left back for so long. They might use that as an opportunity to expand and transform their playing style bringing this Newcastle project into his next phase on the approach to world domination. Newcastle ought to lean into everything Howe has established and simply make it more elite. So, I think their next manager might be somebody who's not truly elite, but has some European pedigree about them, which is exactly what Stefano, Stefano Pioli is. Until his appointment at Milan in 2019, Stefano Pioli was just another Serie A journeyman. But he has broken free from those shackles of a stereotype and enjoyed a hugely successful period in charge at the San Siro. He took AC Milan with a time were in a pretty similar situation to Newcastle in and around the top six of Serie A but never consistently making the top four to champions of Serie A. The Italian even managed to guide Milan to a Champions League semi-final last time, showing he has Champions League pedigree, and of course did finish above Newcastle in the Champions League this season, beating them at St James's Park, which may have been enough to add him to the Newcastle shortlist. And finally we have Burnley, Michael Carrick. The thoughts of Alan Pace, delivered in summer 2023 when Chelsea and Spurs were fighting over Vincent Company, go a long way to explaining Burnley's current predicament. He said, It's not a worry for me that I'm ever going to fire him, because that's a different story. My worry is like I explained to him. It's like dating the most beautiful girl in town, and knowing that there's probably no chance she's ever going to marry you. But everyone else wants to marry her. So it's like, how long can you date? I hope it's for a very, very long time. But, can it, but then again, that's kind of up to her. Well, I mean, clearly company is staying at Burnley for a while. And he's not the most beautiful girl in town anymore. But I reckon what happens is Burnley go down. They maybe do all right in the championship. But then it starts to fall apart. Company goes. Then now and base decides... Who's the next up-and-coming most beautiful girl in town everybody is talking about? 
Oh, Michael Carrick, all right, let's get him. And then he goes through the exact same story as the company is going through right now. What a happy ending. So there we go. That is me predicting every Brimley Club's next manager. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Let me know which ones you agree with or disagree with in the comments below. And if you have enjoyed, please leave a like. Consider subscribing. And I'll see you in another video. Peace.